This preview forms the start of the second chapter of my memoir to Africa in 64. It's about migrations and exploring new territory. I worked on it and its concepts for over a year. It's my talk about my dad at his memorial service, but also my mom and about how important the Peace Corps experience in Africa was for their life and how that experience opened up new frontiers in mom and dad's life, social frontiers. My talk starts in 1965 when the Lauders were four young boys and two adventurous parents. Adventurous parents, we took off in a Willie's Jeep from our home in Malawi for a safari up through East Africa. The Cape to Cairo road back then was an all dirt patchwork with a lot of mud during the rainy season, all the more attractive to Will and Jane. <laughs> Mom and Dad took us to Old Divide Gorge, where Lewis and Mary Leakey had uncovered the first bones of early human ancestors. It wasn't until I returned in my own migration to that region to live and marry that I realized that that trip to Old Divide Gorge was the symbolic closing of a loop, a 300,000 year journey of hundreds and even thousands of migrations. It started when Homo sapiens, our ancestors, spread around all of Africa and out of Africa to the Middle East, Asia, and Europe. Many hundreds of migrations brought Dad's ancestors to Northern Europe. Then starting in the late 1600s and into the 1870s, the big leap across the Atlantic from there westwards, a dozen smaller migrations with settled sojourns in Boston, Virginia, Pennsylvania, Tennessee, Chicago, Missouri, Texas, and finally Oregon and Oakland, California. I like to entertain the idea that over those hundreds of migrations and thousands of generations, Dad's ancestors must have been subject to selective forces, if you will, for genes that drove the taking of risks, for exploring new territory. In 1871, Dad's mother's family, the Vernons, who with nine boys and a sister, Aunt Grace, homesteaded a ranch in Oregon. Dad's father's family, the Lauders, emigrated from Germany at that time. <coughs> I wonder what kind of personality, what kind of genetic makeup it takes to pick up and forever leave a homeland. In the latter case, a history in the Baker's Guild in Bavaria. Migration. So in 1964, those genes, if you will, that deep yearning to explore new territory, strong in their hearts, and with the social winds of the 1960s blowing over their shoulders, and with no more west to go, no more geographical west to go from California, where do you go? Well, of course, you embrace a brand new concept called the Peace Corps. You join, you pack up your four young boys, and you go to Africa. The two and a half years in Malawi opened up new territory for mom and dad social territory. And that need to reach out and explore was satisfied by connecting with people of other cultures. Peoples on the margins of our dominant and well-off society, people of totally different culture and language, who had become vulnerable, who had experienced suffering. This, I believe, became our dad's way of satisfying that deep need in his soul to experience and explore the new. My dad wasn't a religious person. He early on rejected the fire and brimstone Southern Baptist religion that his mother had inherited from the Missouri era of the Vernon family before they came west. He didn't consider himself Christian in the contemporary religious sense. However, Dad's development of a deep and often risk-prone commitment to the vulnerable of humanity, to the left behind, 
to, in, to those who in times past would have been considered outside of society, unworthy of consideration, was, I believe, what Jesus would sanction for Christians to do. Dad inherited the central part of the Christian religion from both sides of his family, that of love and its social context, while at the same time rejecting the more structured aspects of religion. He never analyzed this. He just did This is what that jump into the Peace Corps to go to Africa did for mom and dad. It opened new doors.